ESPN Honolulu presents Call the Coach with University of Hawaii Rainbow Warrior basketball coach Aran Ganat. Brought to you in part by HGEA, IBEW Local 1186, by the Hawaii Building and Construction Trades Council, and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. Welcome to our Monday night edition of Call the Coach. I'm Bobby Curran, along with Rainbow Warrior head coach Iran Ganat. Hawaii entering the home stretch now. There's only three series left to play. God willing, you always have to say that, I, I think, in this conference, although Hawaii fans are very used to Hawaii getting to play. It's not been the case for everybody. But after dropping two, to UCSB, who is the leader in the conference now, second one of those games was a tremendously exciting game in overtime. And now the focus swings to CSUN because that's a two-game series against a team that always seems to have physical talent, has struggled somewhat early in the season. And, Iran, let's talk a little bit about, about CSUN. They're 6-7 and seven. Uh, overall, two and four in the Big West Conference. They've played quite a few fewer games than you have, as you guys are five and seven in the conference. And so these are sort of important series. I, I think a lot of people spend way more time than I do on worrying about, okay, where are you in the standings and can you be in the top six? I, I kind of think it, the, the really the MO never really changes. You just got to get better every day and hope by the conference tournament that you've done that to the point where you're very competitive. Yeah, and especially now more than ever, I'm, I'm really pleased that we've been able to get 12 games in a row under a bill, you know, and hopefully we continue. Obviously, we tested today to continue to play games. We need the games. We need the reps. Uh, we played some really good teams and really disappointed. You know, obviously, you could talk about the comeback, and but we're not okay with, you know, falling short. And, you know, you say this is different. You got six games, three weeks, but three teams. Um, four road, two, uh, two at home. So, And we've been good on the road. So I, I know we had a great day of practice. I know the guys are in the locker room, but they're focused today. And I, I know tomorrow will be really good as we prepare for a CSUN team that, you know, has had some interruptions, but they do have firepower, like you said. Um, they returned a really experienced point guard in Brown, who is, like I talked earlier with you about, similar to Ramsey in terms of his ability to run his team to take care of the ball. They added an A&M transfer in TJ Starks, who's 21 a game. Uh, they have Hendricks, who's a transfer who played at Utah, New Mexico. So, the, and they've always been really potent offensively. So, um, excited about you know the opportunity to continue to compete. In terms of you know getting everybody off the deck, mm -hmm. and that hasn't really seemed to have been a problem with this team. They do seem to be pretty resilient. Yeah, no, I, I think they. You know, it's like we've always talked about. It. We win a big game and you enjoy it for a second, get back to work. You lose a tough one. You let it sting for a second and get back to work. And, you know, going into the last, you know, game on Saturday, we've won three in a row on a back-to-back. -back. And that's always a big thing in, in these kind of games, your ability to bounce back, to be focused. I thought we had a chance to get four in a row. We didn't. Um, but our guys are, you know, like I said, they, you could see how they were in the locker room and I can tell you how they were today. Well, let's get to the, the droughts because they've become, I mean, you sort of have your own mini pandemic going on because it seems in almost every game there's a stretch. The longest one was 11 minutes, 41 seconds in a game you actually won against Irvine in overtime. But it seems frequently there's a five, six, seven minute stretch in which the ball doesn't go through the basket. It's got to be enormously frustrating. Sure. You know, and I think other times we're pretty good. You know, we're just shooting 44, 45. It's not what we like at 36 from three. Um, but I think I talked to you about it before we came on. You know, we had that lull this time. I think it's evolved. You know, we've, we've had these stretches, I think, earlier, lack of execution, lack of chemistry, lack of comfort. Um, and we've gotten better. We were better later and then when we're better against Cal Poly. And then Santa Barbara, who gets a lot of obviously credit for their offense as an underrated defense. But in that stretch the other day with our law, we missed two front ends of free throws. We missed a layup around the rim. We talked a lot today about, you know, when we're late in games or we're in a stretch where we haven't maybe shot it as well from the perimeter to get it inside, get to the line, and finish better around the rim. I think the points in the paint in the first night uh, told the story. And a lot of it was us being on our heels around the rim and then not being around the, on their heels. So we're, we're looking at that, obviously, but – 
you know, I, you just mentioned we've had a couple of these lulls and still won a game here and there, uh, but not to to beat the teams we need to beat and to get where we want to get. We got to avoid those. Yeah, and I think if you had avoided those, the, the record would be very different than what it is. I mean, I look at some of the numbers from this past game um, and the overtime loss. I mean, you guys shot 45% from the field. I think you take that. Clearly, you'll take 47% from three all day long. Ironically, one of the areas that's been very strong in a couple of the recent games has been free throw shooting. It wasn't bad, but it was 69%. You, I mean, and this is I, – I can't get past this. I'm always thinking, you know, if you'd been 23 for 29, you win the game. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that – uh, occurs to you, you got to stop that because you could drive yourself nuts. It is what it is. But I, I would take those, those uh, field shooting percentages uh, all day long. I mean, especially, I mean, who wouldn't want 47% from three point country? Yeah. And getting to the line is a big part of being good. So I'm really pleased with our ability to get to the line, but some of that's misleading. And I think we missed three or four front ends of one and yeah. one. So those are, and, and crit- and these are games that come down to a couple of possessions. So every free throw, I think the other thing we didn't talk about, we talked about going into the week and it wasn't addressed for what we needed to improve on was the turnovers. I mean, we had t- 11 or 12 in the first half. We had three, I think in the first two minutes of the second half and you, you say 45% for the game, but for this, from that point on, for the last maybe 15 minutes of the second half in the overtime, we shot 54, 55% from the field and only turned it over three or four times. So we're not, and we're a good offensive rebound team. We can't offensive rebound our turnovers. So the lulls, you know, you miss a couple of front ends, you turn it over and you don't get a possession or get a shot at the rim. That really hurts you. So I, 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 clearly a focal point and something we got to get over the hump on moving forward. Depending on how you're with us tonight, if you're listening on radio, feel free to call at 296-1420. If you're on Facebook Live or Twitter or Instagram, uh, feel free to text in a question. And we have someone uh, texting. Matt from Michigan is texting us. Can Coach speak about how Jardine has helped since joining the team? Go Bows. No, that's a great question. He's helped immensely. I mean, he's been thrown in the fire. You take for granted that he's had a, a time to get comfortable because it is his first year in our program, even though he's one of our older guys, he's one of our captains. But look, he's <clears throat> if you would you take a guy shooting 50 plus from the field and 50 plus from three, surprising he's not shooting as well from the line as a first year guy. That's incredible um, to, to do that. And I only think he's getting better. And now he's done a good job. Like the other night, his ability to to make good decisions. They're taking him off the three, he goes into the paint, he gets to the rim. Take him off the three, he posts ups. And, and he's and he's done a much better job defensively for us. I mean, Miles Norris got loose late for a couple slip dunks, but in one-on-one situations, Cavs did a phenomenal job. So I think he's done a heck of a job, and I think there's room still for him to grow as he continues to get comfortable. One, one of the wags said, <laughs> that uh, Kasdan Jardine is a 50-50-50 guy because he was 50% from the field, 50-plus from three, and he was 58 or nine from the free throw. He Now he's conquered that. He's almost 64% after uh, the most recent outing. And I think he's a way better. Usually when a guy can shoot 50% from three, he's going to be – you expect him to be an 80% free throw shooter. And I think, I think Kasdan will be somewhere between 75 and 80% by the time the season's over. Yeah, and, you know, up to 63%. He's not good with that. We're not okay with that. No. But where it was, I mean, there was a time where he was a 50-50-50, and that's kind of crazy. But I like that he's still being aggressive. I like that he got 13 free throw attempts the other night, and he made some big ones late for us. But um, I'm just pleased with how he's doing. And, again, he's had the added, not a burden, but to, to lead a group as a captain his first year in the program with so many newcomers, that hasn't been easy. But he's a joy to be around. Um and I think that's helped him have success. Does the does the extra year that basketball players are being allowed after this year, does that apply to, to Kasdan? Yeah, I mean, all those guys have that option. It's just uh, everybody's different and it's unique. But, you know, I, I think uh, it's going to be interesting what happens nationally with that um, because it, it you got recruiting, you got the extra year for guys. I mean, everybody has this year back. Well, that's what we joke about even like seniors, like sure. seniors have the year back. Webster is going to be a third year sophomore next year. You know, but while he's a freshman again next year, it's just the way it is. Here's the thing that I, that I think a lot of people don't know 
that if you're in a Power 5 program, there's not really a problem because the NCAA will let you have these guys, but the question is how do you pay for them? And at the the group of five schools, and I know it's happened with UH Volleyball, and I'm assuming it will be the same with you guys, you want to bring a guy back and be over the limit, you're going to have to find a way to fund that scholarship. Yeah, no, there's a lot of uh... – uh, things underlying with that whole issue in general and, and institutional conference, you know, how you make that all happen. I mean, all that's in play. It's not the same for everybody. As you mentioned, uh, obviously a guy like Kasdan Jardine in a perfect world, you'd, you'd welcome him back. You'd like to have him back. Yeah. And I think with another year, I mean, how much better would he be? And he's been a, he's been a, he's done a great job. I mean, it, at, Great question asking. I think he's done an awesome job, and I think he can still get better. Well, I think if someone was to ask me, my my impressions of the guys who have really had a breakthrough starts with Mate Cholina. I mean, he is a different player than he's ever been previously in his career. What do you attribute that to? Is this just the culmination of a lot of hard work where it's finally kicked in? You know, I think it's a combination of things. I think your fourth year in the program, so he, you know, he's put in the work. You feel like you deserve it. And then what's next is he's got to get more consistent reps, which he has. And then he has to have some breakthrough performances, which he has, you know, double-digit games. He's been rebounding really well. At first, he was a screener who ran about as well as anybody in our league. Now he's defending better. Um, he's he's continued to – he's made some shots. He's become a better passer. Um, so I think – he could have some more continued growth there. This is still early in his career in terms of playing consistent minutes. You know, one of the things that about Mate that you don't see in a lot of seven footers, he will give up his body. He did, made a fabulous, I mean, all seven feet of him was stretched horizontal going after a loose ball. And he managed to get sorted to the seat of his pants to be able to move that forward. It was a remarkable hustle play for a big guy. Well, he had he. You know, he's going to put a, his body out there, and you know he can run. So he made up some ground. I think Hemsley first got the ball loose, and look how many of those we've had. You know, James the other day. I could go across the line. We talk about winning plays, hustle plays, but it's some teams have one guy that is their dirty work guy. One guy gets on the floor. One guy takes charges. We have every single one of our guys has taken charges, gone on the loose ball, and you could feel it on our bench. And we watch every one of those after every game. So hopefully that continues. Well, you know, it's a couple of guys are remarkable. This the spirit on this team. I'm watching. I couldn't tell sometimes if Von McClanahan was in the game because he's out encouraged actually on the court, encouraging guys, giving up of something he's picked up on to someone else. That guy is into it in a big way. Yeah, isn't that great to see? I mean, we I watch it. that all the time to and you could feel it in the huddles and it's you can feel it on the road. You don't have many, we don't have fans, you know, but you can still hear our, what, how, what, whether we travel 1920, whatever we have at home with us, you can feel their presence. You can hear Wally, you know, behind us on the bench every game. So those are great warnings to get. Like our bench is too active. We're too vocal. That's a great thing. And I'll have take you, those warnings. Have you had those warnings? Oh, we've had those over the years. And obviously right. we got to get that in check, but that's a, it's better to, you know, not have to rev him up, but they're to right. bring him yeah. down a little bit, but I think it's a great, and especially with, with this era. We are going to have to take a quick time out, get your either calls or texts together for a Ron Gannat. We'll be right back. This is called the coach. Treat yourself and your family to an old-fashioned staycation. Rediscover Waikiki at the Waikiki Malia by Outrigger. It's a short stroll to shopping, dining, and Waikiki Beach. It's also the home of rivals Waikiki. Watch NBA games safely because they follow all the state and CDC guidelines for safety. So less people means you get more space and great service. Enjoy 12 4K big screens, rivals famous wings, and slice of Waikiki pizza. Rivals Waikiki in the Waikiki Malia by Outrigger. Bro, what you doing now? I'm doing my own PV system, and I get homie fall-proof gear. Bro, I don't see bubble wrap and duct tape going work. Yeah, I get them. Check this out. Okay. Bro, you okay? I think that heat expanding stuff is true. Getting small kind of hot in here. Oh, no. It's raining over here. How we pop water stuff? Hey, hey, poco, poco, poco. Oh, careful. Make sure to have an electrical contractor and licensed electrician do your photovoltaic installations and electrical work. I-B-E-W. Local 1186. Lighting your path to the future. Call the coach on ESPN Honolulu. 
Welcome back uh, to our Monday edition of Call the Coach with Rainbow Warrior head coach, Aran Ganat. Aran, I know, and this is something I, I think you do a particularly good job of. You do a pretty good job of, it's not like any coach doesn't have his moments of frustration, but you're pretty good at understanding that you have to be the first one to squelch that. I mean, it really does start at the t- and that regard especially, it starts at the top. Have, have you ever in your course of your coaching career struggled with that, or has it been natural sort of osmotic that you picked up that that has the way it has to be? Well, you know, my number one job, I know you've t- you know, I've talked about it, my number one job is to lead. And so when you get to that point, I, of course you get frustrated. I, I'll be totally honest, I hate what's going on right now. Like in terms of, you know, I know we have, we don't have this or that, but I still feel like we should be where we want to be. And we've led a couple games, you know, we've been in every single game, but we haven't finished some games. That's frustrating, especially when you want to be good and you want your team to have success and you care so much about a program. But then you get back to, um, you know, whether it's in the moment, because I think so much is you don't always get, you know, to go have a good night and then get ready. You have to be in the moment, display that, whether it's in a game when you're just giving, giving up a run, you know, I, you, I pick my spots, you know, how the buttons you have to push are different with each team, each guy phase of where you're at in the season. And with the mindset and goal to keep your team together, together and, and focused on, on the next play. But it's, it's the challenge every coach, every player, every competitor goes through is to find the balance between uh, using that frustration in the right way. You know, I, I don't, and I think another way, you generally handle this better than some. I, an example of a guy who, nec- who doesn't necessarily handle this aspect well would be Russell Turner um, in terms of dealing with his frustration with officials. And every coach gets it. But, I mean, there is some officials that you can sort of learn. For example, one of the guys on the – I thought – and I wouldn't say this if I didn't think – I thought it was, generally speaking, a good crew that you had this past week, and I didn't have a problem with them. But some guys – Rick Batzel, for example, is especially prone to calling illegal screens. It's his – he called one – in one stretch, he called three times down the court, twice on you guys, once on Santa Barbara. I think a team and, – and obviously it's, it's probably an assistant coach's job to – key on this I, I don't know if you assign a guy to this but when you read that from an official everybody's got to be aware of it and know okay tonight you've got to be really careful about your screens do, do you guys function that way do you assign a particular assistant to that you know and i think we're all been coaching long enough we have an experienced crew and been in the west long enough that we know every there's a scout within the scout and then the game tells you how it's going to be dictated too. sometimes it changes so you know santa barbara has always um you know been asking for illegal screens on us and every time we've played them so we knew that kind of going in and some i think were anticipated but overall i had the the officials didn't dictate the game they never do Uh, you know I, I we go back to what can we do better you know, we, we talk and engage with the officials all the time. And I think it's my most thing. The most important thing for me with a crew is that you can talk to them um, yeah. and they, and they, an explanation and you got to always give an explanation. So, you know, I know we had some, you know, James had a tough one. I, I didn't agree with it, you know, but we move forward. We watch it. I mean, we watch every call like yeah. you, like we talk about we, so much of scouting us, them, every call. And, you know, the dribble hand, there's been points of emphasis that are different every year. The, the sure. freedom of movement has been bigger. So you got to continue to use those as teaching points with your group. Okay. And I, it looks like your guys are fairly good learners. I, I see a lot of guys that aren't making the same mistake repetitively. And I, I think as a coach, you got to love that. Yeah, though, that's what you, that's how you judge them. Like we want to be at a certain level. And we expect, I always say this, the most reasonable expectation you can have of anybody is what we have of our guys. And that's to simply get better. Do we want to get there overnight? Yes. Does it happen like that normally? No, but you need to take the steps. We're not okay with staying the same ever. And so that's, and that's in all areas. In terms of the way, cause you're about to go on another road trip and two of your three remaining series will be on the road. Have there been any things on the road that you say, okay, we can improve on the way we're traveling or the way our group is doing anything? Because it seems to me that everybody's pretty fine on the learning curve. Is, am I about right on that? 
Yeah, I think our guys travel well. And, you know, we've always talked about if we travel well, you give yourself a good chance to perform on the road. This year we made some wrinkles and adjustments for COVID. And our guys have been very efficient and professional in their approach. We've won, we've won two games on the road already. We haven't played that many road trips. So we feel pretty confident on the road. That's the mentality. We've been good on the road over the years. I know that's a stigma about Hawaii, but we're not using that nonsense crutch. We're going to perform on the road uh, and give ourselves a chance. And, you know, I think our guys are looking forward to it. I think sometimes with during this stretch, the, the, just the plane flights and the bus rides have been a bit of a team building, a little bit more of a team building, believe it or not, than we have at home at times. We have another this stretch. We have another text to know, Matt from Honolulu. Coach, what are your feelings about being on the road right before the Big West tournament every year? You know, it's good. Overall, I, <laughs> it's interesting. whatever they put us, you know what I'll say. I'll say, hey, I love it. I love it. <laughs> You know, so, and that's the mindset I want with our team. You know, I think overall, when you can, we travel more than anybody in the country. You know, we add, we obviously over the year, over the next couple of years, we'll add one extra trip. So I think when we can do that, that would be, that's good. I mean, but it does lengthen your, you're on the road for quite some time. And in some cases, and hopefully in the future, we'll be on the road for even longer if we can continue to, you know, give ourselves the chance to, to excel in conference tournament and in posting. I mean, the first year we were on the road, as you know, we were our one game from uh, we were on the road for 21 straight days. And if we have a better have been a stretch, it would have been 26, 28 days. And I wouldn't have been, would have been, I wouldn't have been, you couldn't have found me happier to be on the road so long. So, you know, I, I do think um, it's now every year since we've been here, I think it was supposed to be this year, the first year where we would have been at home to finish. Um, but it changed when the COVID schedules changed. And and uh, I think the way it's working, you'll play the final series at UC Davis. I, I used to think the absolute best of all possible worlds was that you would finish in the old, when it was at Anaheim, you'd finish at Fullerton. And then you'd have that, because you'd be in the ho- that same hotel for Fullerton is the same hotel you would be in while you were in the tournament. And that was really, that was practically after a while, it felt like you're, it wasn't your own bed, but it sure felt like it. I don't think our our staff, our players, and especially on the road too. I don't think we've spent more. We've spent the most time here and at the Fullerton area. Right, <laughs> I hear years. you. No, no question. Okay, we got another texter here. This is uh, Jim from Wyanai. Are you in the hunt for a player that's similar in size and athleticism to Amadou So? Always. <laughs> I I think. Uh, He's a, he's a nice player, obviously. And I think we're, we've obviously recently, you know, things are, you know, we don't have Samuto, we don't have Bernardo. I think Bernardo has got some of those dimensions and he's gotten a little strong and hopefully has a great off season, obviously, but no, absolutely. We, we, we want to add a front court piece. You know, I can't talk about um, guys, you know, we have, I can talk about guys who we sign in April, obviously, but I can certainly talk about what we, what we're looking for to fill. We, we want to add another interior presence. Um, that can be a factor around the rim and a defensive in, on both ends. And then we always want to add shooting. Okay, this is a Carl, our same, uh, same Jim from Wyandotte. How do you get Justin Webster more chances to shoot the ball in your current offensive scheme? Good luck at Northridge. Go Warriors. I appreciate that. Great question. I think he, you know, he's, we were just talking off the air. You know, here's a guy as a sophomore who's shooting 54% from the field, 40 nine percent from three and 75 from the from the line so it's had a nice and look he came off the player of the week so i think we did a, some good things to try to find a way to get him open and what happens when you're player of the week is they're targeting you i mean they see those numbers and they're going to make it tough for you and you know i think you know I, I liked he was aggressive i think early he wasn't as aggressive because of the focus they were giving to him and and the other guys need to do a better job to continue to score it uh, so they have to give them the, and that's kind of been our team. You know, you got Justin, you got Taz, you got James, you got Junior, and then other guys at times can can contribute. So we we looked at some things today to free him up a little bit more, um, whether it's off the ball, put him in ball screens, and you know, I think at the end of the day too, our ability to have multiple guys be a threat will open up things for him as well. You know, the, one of the things I just think I tried to describe to uh, to Steve Wenthe, who's the UCSB we're having a conversation. He's their play-by-play guy. And he said, I was, what kind of a guy? I said, Justin Webster is a gym rat. 
You have to know it. He loves, he loves to be in the gym. He loves to put up shots. I mean, he works on his game. That's his life more or less and has been probably since he's 10. So, and that's not going to change, which is why, and I think you would agree with this. That's why a guy like that always gets better because he's just on it constantly. And the character he has, you know, like you said, it's a basketball family. His dad was a 2000 point scorer at Oklahoma. You know, his sister plays at UC Riverside. We got some funny pictures of those guys when they were young. Uh, it, they grew up with it and, and they're so uh, professional about it. They're so easy to work with. Um, but Justin's like, we say it all the time. You need guys to be consistent. That's who he is. Like he is always a positive upbeat guy. He comes and says hello to everybody regardless of whether he played well or not or whatever happened to him, you know, he doesn't have that mentality. So when you combine a work ethic and natural talent and, a, and a, an approach like that in terms of how he treats people, how upbeat he is, you have a chance and you take for granted. You, I mean, I think sometimes we got a junior running around there, but he's only in his, he hasn't played that many division one games, you know, and, right. and I think their best is yet to come for him. No, I, I think that when you think that he's a sophomore and he's going to be a sophomore next year, that's crazy. I mean, can you, the ceiling is so high for him. Got Harry from IEA. His uh, text is, is Bernardo De Silva guaranteed to come back next year if he's healthy? Yeah, Bernardo's t all his, you know, we've had a lot of talks with him and the medical team, and I, I, this is tough. I mean, you were, you were counting on a guy and it just didn't happen for him. You know, he was, I think he was a guy we started obviously as a freshman who we expect would make a, a big jump and we could use him, but it's not happening for him. And so he's done a good job with the medical team and, and doing his rehab to get to a position where he can have a really good year. And obviously he'll still be a sophomore. So, but his, his, his communication with us is just, you could see the hurt and pain and his inability to be out there, but not in it, but his focus to get out there and help the team in the future. I guess I, I think what I'm reading between the lines on that question is, is how is his, how is his spirit? I mean, is he, is he, does he manage to keep himself up? Do you have any doubts that, you know, that maybe homesickness or anything else would creep in that would prevent him from being here? You know, it's interesting. He's been away from home for a while um from from high school to coming over here and i know he loves it here and and he's he's uh you know he he's quiet he's got a quiet demeanor at times but he's one of our you know guys who jokes around the most too so and he stands during most of the game like zora and bernardo stand because they're so into the game they i don't know if they ever sit um so i think look i think there was a lot of emotion um when he was wrestling through the the fighting to get back to where he wanted to and also finding the right decision here. And I think there was a lot, like I said, it, it hurt him. It, I could see the hurt in him, um, but he's focused right now. He's everything that we follow up on, how he's doing with his rehab and his treatment and the doctors and he's doing that. He's gone stronger. He just, I mean, you know how much pain you or I would have if we weren't allowed to be around something we love. So um, I feel, like I said, I feel for the guys that, yeah, but I, that's why I keep saying at the end of the day, I'm really proud for the 11 that have, have, you know, navigated through this together and Bernardo, you know, continuing to be a, a great supporter on the sidelines. Okay. We have got, I, I've got a caller on the line and I will stay with us. Glenn from my He's act. We're going to get to him. It was actually a texter. We'll, uh, but I'll read his text as soon as we come back from this time out. This is called the coach on ESPN on a Lulu. Sports fans, get to Rival Sports Lounge in the Waikiki Malia by Outrigger. Your sports action on direct TV sports packages. The NBA is heating up with all the action on 12 4K screens. Enjoy local beer on tap and a big variety of liquor. Whack our famous wings and slice of Waikiki pizza. We follow state and CDC guidelines for your safety, which means less people, so there's more space for you and great service. Rival Sports Lounge in the Waikiki Malia by Outrigger. Sports Travel Hawaii is awarding four college scholarships to deserving Hawaii students. Sports Travel Hawaii is dedicated to supporting the educational and athletic pursuits of Hawaii's children. Each scholarship recipient will receive round-trip airfare between Hawaii and the city of his or her respective college or university. Alleviate some of the financial burden by applying for Sports Travel Hawaii's college scholarship program. Applications will be accepted and find out if you or your child is eligible by going to sportstravelhawaii.com. Call the coach on ESPN Honolulu. 
Welcome back to this Monday edition of Call the Coach with Rainbow Warrior head coach Iran Gannat. This is a text, Glenn from Maya. How is Beyond Riley? From the brief times he's played, he looks like he has a lot of talent. I think we. I think he has a lot of talent. I think he's still getting comfortable, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if in the next couple of weeks here, he he makes an imprint uh, on our season. You know, I think he's he practiced really well today. Uh, you know, I've talked off the air with you about how him and Wally are our two freshmen. Wally had the advantage of playing a lot of under 18s, under 19s international competition, um, whereas beyond when you a freshman who loses some of the summer and the practices we had, his was a little bit later in that, but. You know, he he's 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 gives us you know physicality. He gives us size. He can score on the block. He can offensive rebound. He can block out. You know, I think if I think he's a guy as he shows he can get more comfortable in these practices. I think you know, don't be surprised if he becomes a factor a little bit. We got a caller now. Shane's on the line. Hey, Shane, you're on with the run. Oh, hi, coach. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the first half of the show, so I sorry if I missed anything, but um. I just wanted to comment on, I called last week, I was raving about Biwali Bales, and, you know, I noticed you left him in the him in the game, you know, the, the main part of regulation and all of overtime. I really thought, you know, I know Jardine and, um, uh, Jardine and um, Junior hit some big shots, but I thought Biwali was a huge part of the comeback, um, especially his effort and intensity on the defensive end, and I'm assuming that's why you left him in the game. I know he, he had a, I, I just I just love his heart. I just love his hustle, and um, I, I'm assuming that's why you left him in. Absolutely, no. He's a. Uh, I mean, he's. I didn't feel like I could take him out, to be honest. It's just something you know. I've always gravitated towards those kind of guys, but for him, from day one, or even recruiting him, you know, out of high school, talking to all his coaches, that is a constant for him. And I think he's got an awesome future. He's absolutely fearless. I mean, you saw possessions where he's. You know, he's, he's, he's always had a point of attack, you know, picks up guys full court, but he has that same thing on the offensive end in terms of getting the pain. And he does not shy away from any matchup. You could argue McLaughlin is uh, um, the player of the year in the league at this point, and he wanted that mm -hmm. matchup. And even when McLaughlin wanted to start taking him inside, he took him on. So I just think uh, there's he might not, might not show up all the time in the box score, and he's our best rebounding guard but he is a factor mm -hmm. in a lot of our runs. And so during that stretch and he's in incredible shape. I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't feel like we could uh, take him out and he's earned that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, as a fan, I just, I, I get tired watching him. I mean, he's got so much energy, like the, <laughs> yeah. the energizer bunny and, 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 you know, I just wanted to comment, you know, a, a lot of us, you know, we, we recognize I, I, you guys are playing hard. You, I mean, I can see the preparation, the effort you guys put in. Um, the, the kids don't give up. We, we always know they're going to fight, and we just appreciate that. And just hang in there. I mean, I, I think we got a bright future. I mean, especially the guards. I, I don't think any of them even scratched their potential. Even Webster. I think they're, 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 I think they got so much potential with Bales and Webster, Coleman and um, <clears throat> McClanahan. And, yeah, next year – I. I, I'm excited. I mean, I, I think we got a bright future. So I just, you know, I, I just wanted to let you know, us fans, we, we appreciate it and the, the effort that you guys, and just, just keep, keep at it. You guys are doing things the right way. Thank you, Shane. That's uh, nice. I really, yeah, I appreciate that. And I, I know we all appreciate that. And uh, you're excited about where we're headed and who we have coming in and we'll add some more pieces, but at the same time, I know we all hurt because we want Hawaii deserves the best. Our program deserves the absolute best, and we're going to keep battling until we get it to where it deserves. One of the things that Shane said, and I, I completely agree with this, and I've had this thought in my head, when the fans are back in, the Wally Bales will be a huge fan favorite, don't you think? I mean, I just think – He's such a Hawaii kind of player, the kind of player Hawaii fans love. He's that guy. An all-timer, and we've had some great – I always tell people, like, Hawaii fans appreciate a winner, number one, and we got to do our part there. But they always appreciate – this is a great fan base in terms of two great areas to respond to, and that is working hard and playing together. I mean, they – and and obviously Hawaii fans respect opponents that do that even, and that's that's awesome, but – you know, I, I've, we've had some guys like that who give every ounce of their energy. And I think this team does in jail. I remember just, I don't know why I'm going on a tangent. I remember when Matt Gibson fouled out of a, his last game. And and Matt was obviously all over the place, little Matt. 
Yeah. But I do remember when he picked up his fifth out, like the whole crowd recognized it. And he was one of the fan favorites since I've been here because of his absolute effort. And it was like a standing ovation for a fifth foul on his senior night. Um, and that was pretty cool. But that's, you know, can you imagine those loose ball plays and the that we've made recently, how the crowd would be? I mean, I'm just looking forward to that day for this group, too. I wish they could because some of these guys haven't seen it and they deserve to. But it will happen. Well, I hope they'll be back, and, and next year I think there's a pretty good chance that we are going to be looking at full arenas. We got Matthew on the line. Matthew, go ahead. You're on with the run. Uh, thank you. And, hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Now, I, wanna, I had a couple questions earlier about uh, Bernardo da Silva, and, actually, and um, my first one is, have you heard anything from him? Are we going to see him back? maybe for the CSUN games, and that's number one. And two, I've been saying on fan phones how much that I like to see Bernardo take on those big, take on the big guys like at Irvine and Cal Poly and just recently Santa Barbara. So, Coach, my, so coach what do you think is – do you think that uh, Bernardo could have took those guys, took the big guys, and maybe last night could have – or uh, Saturday night, rather, could have been a win? Yeah, I think Bernardo healthy can. I, I said this last week, and, I, and I, I'm sorry, maybe, but Bernardo will be out for the season, unfortunately. Um, he 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 battled through it, and it became a decision between him and the medical team that we had to make a tough decision. I support that decision, and but it's hard in the short term. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that we we're, we're, we have some lack of depth inside. I appreciate the fight of the guys we do have, and obviously what you've seen us have to do is, is bring in some more doubles double teams of the bigs this year. It's just the reality of our situation. I thought we did a heck of a job against Irvine there. And it's tough when you got a Santa Barbara team, we have to mix it up because they got such great shooting and guard play around those really good bigs. So, you know, I feel for Bernardo. I talked about it earlier. It's a tough situation, but I, I'm just really excited and appreciative of the guys we have and, and looking forward to him continuing to do his best to get back. I hear you. Thanks for the now, call. Uh, I appreciate it, Matthew. Are we, now, are we going to be able to take another caller, Tanner, or do I have – or rather uh... – Tanner. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Keegan. But I, I just don't know where I am on time. Take the caller. We got Thomas on the line. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Um, Coach, I agree. I think you guys battle at, at every game, and I really appreciate that, and I'm, I'm a solid fan. My only question I have for you is what team in the league do you think uh, is your biggest? I didn't think that we're going to gonna be like that, and, and why do you think that? Take it off the air. Thank you. Thanks. Is that in terms of what's the team in the league that maybe is the biggest surprise? Do you think, Bobby? I that's what I read that as well. You know, who's so who has, who's been better than you thought they'd be? You know, I you know we knew it was Irvine obviously with their returning front court, Santa Barbara with their returning everybody, and and Bakersfield I think to some people might be a surprise because it's new to the league, but they have the most returning guys in the country. So I think um, you know it's been hard to kind of answer that question because there's been some inconsistencies in terms of interruptions for each team. I think from an outsider's perspective, maybe I could see some people being surprised by Bakersfield just because, you know, they are new to our league. But when you have that much experience, most in the country in a COVID era, you know, that combination worked in their favor and they've done a good job getting better. You know, I think Riverside's done a nice job, but they had a lot of experience coming back. So, and they haven't played as many league games as everybody. So I think you could talk about those two a little bit. Well, I hope that answers your question, Thomas. And I think I just about have to go to a break right now. Let's do it, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Call the Coach. 591 Shoot him for Shoot Who's got the best deals in Vegas around? Who's got the best deals today? Vacations Hawaii. Good luck, we go play. Call the coach on ESPN Honolulu.
Welcome back uh, to our Monday edition of Call the Coach with the Rainbow Warrior head coach, Iran Ganon. And Iran, we encourage those, if you are on radio, you can call us, 296-1420, or it's that same number if you want to get to text through one of the other platforms. And Iran, I, I know when you go on this road, obviously you would love to take a pair from Northridge, but I think that's not really the way this program thinks. It's really about it's this first game. It's this. It's it's every possession. It's every time you're back on defense. I, I don't know. I think when maybe I because I'm a I've been around it for so long now for your, the entirety of your career. I sort of know where you guys are at with that. And for the people who think ahead of like oh they got to get two here and split here, I'm like, let me just tell you guys that's not the way internally that's not the way it goes that's not what they that's not what they think about you know we talk about in the beginning of the year and long term and all that and then we put it aside we try not to address it if we ever address it it's like early in the week on mondays and just and then we go okay now here's what matters us and them that's it move on to this phase so you know i think here's the deal too we just played a team coming off a bye we have six games against three teams we said four on the on the road two at home and Northridge is coming off a bye week and so will Davis at the end. So our whole message was we're not like whatever it is, we're going to be ready to go, but we can't waste our days. We don't get as many days as these other teams. So I will say that we had a good practice today and I expect to have a great practice tomorrow, travel well and put ourselves in a position to do something special on the road. And that's Here's kind of our approach. Here's a texter, Jeff from Honolulu. Hi, Coach. Tough luck this past weekend with UCSB. In the next three series, which team is of the most concern to you guys? That's kind of funny. That's funny. Exactly. Funny because of the conversation. No, I mean, you know, I'll say this because I don't want to get ahead, but I I appreciate the question. So you're playing against it. I talked about Northridge, and then we're playing, obviously, against a Long Beach State team who's added a, a transfer in a, as a Washington who can really create some havoc and they've had some interruptions, but you can see like Northridge went at Pepperdine when they put it together. These are some, a lot of dangerous teams. Davis, you know, it was picked third in the league. They played less games than everybody, but they have everybody back and, you know, player of the year type in Mannion and Pepper just had 30 the other night. So I think a lot of these predictions on teams and where they're at, it's harder to do it. Not everybody's played the same amount of games. It's just been unique, but I know uh, we have a lot of respect for all the opponents, and I don't care about the other ones again. I care about us tomorrow, and we're really looking forward to preparing for Northridge Friday. You know, and I do think that if you have a disappointment in the season or a game that you'd hoped or thought you might win and you don't or one that you were ahead in and lose, I just think the approach of getting just getting better every day, getting back to work, it, it helps get people past the disappointments because you can get mired in that. I've seen teams that it's happened to. Yeah. And so that's where we go back to. We better present that message. Look, it hurts a lot. I mean, it is a really hard, it, you know, the profession is awesome, but it's a lot of ups and downs. And, and, and I don't think it's different for the student athletes because they care a lot, but your ability at the end of the day to move forward, uh, and the Billy, like you said, you get, when you get back to just working, you get away from thinking, if that makes sense. And that's where you get great confidence. And then you also like to say, number one job is to lead, but then you go back to how do I help our team? How do I help our team? That's all that really matters. And I'm going to, I know I speak for our staff and our guys. I'm going to enjoy every day we get with this group. I appreciate the heck out of what they're going through. And I wish things were better than they currently sit. Um, but we're going to make sure we put our energy into what matters, which is all we can control. One of the things, and I'm going to see another guy's texting in there, get it, putting his message up now. One of the things I appreciate, and I've said this publicly, I, I think, and I've been around a tremendous number of staffs here in 25 years, and I think this is as good a staff as this school's ever had. I just think you have a constancy. Everybody's got a role. I just think this is, and I, I don't think you disagree with this, that this really is a staff that's come together and grown together. Yeah, I talk about the support staff. You know, you're talking about Dominic Gibson and Jack are on their way to get their uh, master's degrees. Dominic's been such a stud under the radar. Jesse Nakanishi has been amazing. You know, all these guys, I, I feel like, you know, I, I, 
uh, we've brought in high level quality people and guys who will be future head coaches, guys who have been with us, who will be future head coaches that aren't with us now. And you see them, you know, doing great things, but yeah, I have so much respect for the history of our program. I, I don't, you know, I, I can speak that we, I, I really love our staff, but I've worked with some staffs here and I love those guys. And there's guys been before yeah. us. Now I have the, you know, fortune of meeting a guy like Larry Little, Red Rocha, you know, work with Bob Nash, Jackson Wheeler, all these guys are on uh, Jamie Dixon. I, t- I was in his office. Now Jabari was in his office, Scott Rougeau. Like these are some awesome, uh, uh, leaders. And so uh, I, we got, we just make sure we do our part. And, and I think you yeah, have guys that have really answered the bell. We got Mike from Kaneo. Here's the text. Hi coach with the tournament move to Las Vegas this year. I want to know, would you rather be playing the tournament in Vegas or Anaheim? Vegas, because we're playing in Vegas. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's, it's it's really interesting this year because of the, you know, Vegas in an, at a time when we can't have fans. I don't know what they're doing yet there. But, you know, I, I, I've enjoyed, you know, being on the West Coast and staying on the West Coast, staying in L.A., Southern California, you know, in terms of staying for the next to conference tournament. But I'd be fired up for for our team to play in Vegas when fans can be there too, because I know how our fan, you know, you've seen how our fans travel, but, and I know we wish we, they were there, but can you imagine them in Vegas? Oh, I, I, I've seen them in Vegas actually. And that's <laughs> a terrific place. They do love it there, but I, you know what? I don't even know. I haven't heard anything from the conference on whether or not there will be some spaced or level, some level of fandom available in Vegas. I don't know. I can't say for sure that it's ruled out. Yeah, I think a lot depends depends on how things go. Look, we we go back to we're testing three times this week and hope to play two games. And so right now, I really one of the underrated things these guys have been able to put six, twelve straight games together, and I think those games will help us moving forward. But I appreciate the sacrifices they made, everybody collaboratively to give us a chance to continue to play. Well, you guys need it's important that you guys keep everybody healthy just so you can have can go five on five in practice because you don't have a big margin. They got 11 guys. I mean, it's not too far away from having Montgomery had to have to jump in on one of the teams. Well, it's tried at times. And it, yeah. look, the reality, we don't, we've had to adjust a lot of things. And that's why I appreciate where guys we've, we've had efficient practices in different ways. The scout team days are over for this team this year. It's <laughs> right. not possible. And, and that affects us in some ways, but we found a creative way to continue to, to find a way to get better while keeping these 11 intact. Well, and I think it's that you know, continues. I'm going to knock on wood a little here while we say that because there's some things in basketball you cannot control. And I think what you guys do is a good job of worrying about the things you can control. And the other things, you just – that's the uh, the basketball god, so to speak. You don't really have anything you can do about that. Yeah, but you can do is put them in a position to find a way to get better and keep them as safe as possible, find that balance. I think we're doing that. So – um, six, six games left. Here we go. Well, and that's, that's six good guys. You said every day of practice, it's a good day. Every day, every game, it's a good game. So let's hope that keeps up. And uh, just so, to remind everybody, we do have one more uh, call the coach. And I believe that is on March the 1st. So that'll be before you head off to UC Davis. We are just about out of time. And the thoughts, last thought for you, uh, Iran. What is the what is a priority for tomorrow's practice? Because we did and we only addressed it in the second half of Santa Barbara. It's going to be ball, it's going to continue to be similar to last week. It's going to be ball control, um, maximizing possessions. So our execution got to be a little better, and we certainly have to take care of the ball. So that's been um, because we didn't check the box. Um, that continues to be the issue. I mean, we can't get over the hump if we turn it over as many times as we have, and the amount of unforced sloppy turnovers, and so. That's that's at the forefront right now. Aran, thanks so much. Good luck. Have a great week of practice. Thanks, as always. I appreciate it, Bobby. That is a wrap here on Call the Coach for Aran Ganat. I'm Bobby Curran. Thanks to Keegan Ota from all of us. Aloha. This has been Call the Coach on ESPN Honolulu. Brought to you by HGEA, IBEW Local 1186, by the Hawaii Building and Construction Trades Council, and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union.
Hello, this is Brian McInnes. Check out my weekly podcast, Court Sense, for all things hoops from a Hawaii perspective. Every episode is tailored to a specific interesting guest. Court Sense is available on demand at ESPNHonolulu.com, Apple, and Google Podcasts.